she is the queen of everything quirky and a true champion of the different. With every release, she challenges not only the standards but also the norms as she breaks stereotypes while also succeeding in breaking records. She's a queen of her own right and her own taste and I doubt you can even try to go against that thought. Welcome back to Rocket Stars and today we're talking about Claire Elise Boucher, the woman we have known to love as Grimes. Before we move with the feature, we're stopping you right here to remind you that we need to ask a few simple favors. First, we kind of need you to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Also, if you could kindly click on the bell button too, that'd be great. If you do all these, we promise to get you in a Grimes secret show. We promise and we assure you we have been tested and proven for those kinds of things. Come on now, have at it. And now the feature. Truth be told, most controversies that shroud Grime revolve on the confusing aspect of her career on whether she wants to just produce music or go all in as a pop star. Back in 2010, she kept telling interviewers that the only reason she's the face of her music is that she can't afford to get herself someone else to do it for her. She exclaimed and explained how much she doesn't like being in front of people. But besides that, she also loves the intricacies that come with becoming a pop star. So this in turn set an internal turmoil for her. She believes she can write a a lot of pop hits that are easy crowd pleasers, but she doesn't find the fun in that and she believes that it shouldn't define Grimes as an artist. She knows how to take care of her image branding and she knows how to follow through to bring the package all together. She's not some artist arboring a weird phase and trying things out of her comfort zone for the clout. Everything with Boucher is calculated from the music and music. down to the image. Like basically Seb who started the label one day was like, um, hey do you want to be on my record label when there was like nobody on the label and it was like nothing and I was like yeah, I'll be on your record label. But then he actually did a really good job. And then like, uh, and then the label like- Her strongest statement was on how she, as a woman, would not stand phased by the misogynistic industry. She was set and very focused on destroying the idea and image of having a female solo artist be framed like a mere sex symbol or a music puppet for the executives. Miss Boucher defied it all by making her own music as a producer and delivering it all on stage as a star. She even told in a 2012 interview that she would rather be respected by a small group of people and be understood for her talent and importance rather than having her be super successful and drowning in money. Like I like the idea of like infusing like the pop star and the producer or something. So like I really like Rihanna and I really like like Nicki Minaj, but I also really like like I don't know black dice. Like I wanna be like knob twisting and doing all that stuff, but then I also wanna be like she coined her music to be post-internet, being that she was born in the age of the internet and she did not need to go so hard to dig and discover music she liked. As a child born of the internet, she easily came across several artists of different cultures and sounds that were to her liking. It was very different from the eco chamber that people had to deal with before, only focusing on certain genres. With what she was born with, she can easily consume the music from both the past and anything in the present. Hence, her work had stood for what the art critics would comprehend, but the people in music wouldn't. Weirdly enough, we move a few years forward into her story and we find Miss Boucher in a romantic entanglement with billionaire Elon Musk. This would of course drive the press of the world crazy, highlighting her personal life with Musk and completely overshadowing the aspect of her art. It even came to a point where several articles were coming out about her, but none had mentioned her music, despite her being about to release a new album. The music scene is a small circle, and at times, you get to see the titans go with the underdogs like it's nobody's business. When looking back at old Old posters, it would surprise you that the openers for world-renowned bands usually follow suit in about a couple years after. The recognition gets passed down wonderfully, given a glimmer of opportunity for acts that are yet to be discovered and loved by the world. Such is the case for My Chemical Romance and Grimes, who apparently are into the same management. In the news back in July 2019, reports have shown that Miss Lauren Valencia, manager of both Grimes and My Chemical Romance, had passed away. It took both artists by surprise, proceeding to grieve with a tribute two days after the news was released. It definitely would not be easy to deal with and would for sure be a major bump in the road for them. Well, that's all for today, folks. Those secret gig passes are still up for grabs. You just have to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and click on the bell button. Easy peasy. If you think we're missing out on something or someone here, let us know in the comments below. Also, if you're having fun here, share the love by sharing the video to your loved one and friends and family so you'd be all on the same page. That's pretty much it, guys. This is Rocket Stars, and we're we're out.